Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Sunday, October 23rd, around 4 p.m. Mountain Time 2022. Now, the reason we're bringing these grand solar minimums updates here over at Magnetic Reversal News is because we got a community guideline strike over at Oppenheimer Ranch Project. We will not be able to post there until the end of the month. So stay tuned for more daily updates that we would usually publish on Oppenheimer Ranch Project. Now we currently are in a geomagnetic storm watch with potential KP6 happening in just the next few hours. And then it should calm down. But we're also closely watching a seismic swarm just north of Ostia volcano in Iceland that just began. But the big story is a major storm is bringing early season snow to the western U.S. Keep calm. It's boom time. Let's take a look at some of the areas that should get hit through Monday. And that's quite a wide area through the Rocky Mountains. Some of the first heavy snows to high elevations, including Utah. Wyoming, Colorado, Idaho, and Montana, as well as the Cascades. So lots of snow in the high country. As PG&E warned customers today for the potential for shutoffs, and this is due to wind and, well, their green energy policies. First major snow system of the season arrives in Colorado as well. Ho, ho, ho. Shut up, Al. Get in your hole. First measurable snow of the season likely tonight. As we scold, Mr. Gore, snow is likely in Casper, Wyoming this afternoon. As a, we take a look at the total snow mass for the Northern Hemisphere, getting off to a very early and very high start. Powerful storm to affect the West and the Plains. Multiple hazards are forecast for the remainder of the weekend and into early next week. High elevation Accumulating snow for the intermontane west, much below normal temperatures and strong winds are expected. And I expect several dozen record lows to be happening over the next few days. Winds and dry conditions may result in wildfires across the central plains today. Take a look at those counties in bright pink. That's you guys, so don't flick your cigarette butts out the window if you're in these regions. The threat for severe thunderstorms for portions of the plains and upper Mississippi Valley also exist. And we're going to watch this winter system as we move it through 3, 6, 12 hours. We're going to see a front here form in Oklahoma, and that's going to be the severe weather threat Monday through Tuesday as it moves east. By Wednesday, it should be near the Appalachians and breaking up. So good news there. Let's take a look at some of the total snowfall. Let's do it. And let's just walk it through here. So here is the rest of Sunday into Monday morning. We're going to be picking up at least 6 to 10 inches in the high country here. Central Colorado could see up to 16 inches. Uh, and Canada is the big winter chicken dinner. As heavy snow moves into British Columbia, as we predicted, picking up feet up to here. And this four feet of snow through Tuesday, which will be their lose day up in British Columbia. By Tuesday, snow is going to be moving down through the Cascades and be covering a wide swath of the Rockies. There's another little event there happening Thursday. It looks like Wednesday and Thursday to add insult to injury, especially up in British Columbia. Let's just move the future models through and whoa, we could have a nor'easter happening the first week of November, but these models are way out. Now magnitude 4.4, 10 miles south of Squentna. This is in southern Alaska. Now let's talk about the tectonic setting of southern Alaska. Earthquakes in southern Alaska are produced by a number of different tectonic features. And the strongest earthquakes in southern Alaska are generated by a megathrust fault that marks the contact zone between the subducting Pacific and overriding North American plates. The 1964 M9.2 Great Alaska Earthquake, which is still the second largest earthquake ever recorded worldwide, began under Prince William Sound. So this is an area we should be very concerned with as we are seeing some seismic activity in southern Alaska. Take a look uh, at the seismic map for a whole. Not much going on. 5.0 in Xinjiang, China. And we have that activity out here in Hawaii that we need to keep a close eye on as Mauna Loa is about to blow up. Now let's take a look at this. An earthquake swarm north of Herbride. 
mountain. And during the night of 23rd October 2022, an earthquake swarm started north of the mountain. It looks like a tectonic earthquake. And this is because the, the closest volcano is down here at Astia, where there is still some activity. Could be some type of magmatic conduit or a new volcano forming. It's anyone's guess. The largest earthquake at the writing of this article had a magnitude of 4.0. And this article was written about 12 hours ago. As we can see, the swarm continues north of Ostia. There's where the swarm is. Here's Ostia. We've got Grimsvolten here and Bartabunga. Here's the map. There's Bartabunga, Grimsvolten. Ostia and that swarm just a little to the north of it. So we're going to keep close eye on what's going on there with the seismicity as we move on to space weather. Here we are at Solar Ham. You can see we had some minor flaring in the low C range, but overall, let's take a, the latest HMI intensity. There are no, there's nothing here that could be any flares from here are going to be minor. Any of these sunspot regions, which are barely sunspot regions, it looks like a solar minimum sun to me. What say you? Now, the reason we are in, had geomagnetic unrest and geomagnetic storm conditions is because and care of this beautiful. Coronal hole. Let's take a look at it. And typically, it takes a day until it passes before the coronal hole has a chance to couple 24 to 48 hours. And it is in the position of coupling now. And you can see what happened. The BZ shifted. The phi angle shifted. And we got that geomagnetic instability. Here we see the plasma speed rising from 300 at the low in the last 24 hours to up to 600 kilometers per second. That's going to cause a reaction and well definitely send us into geomagnetic instability or storm as it did in this case for about nine hours now let's take a look at this this is an x-ray view of wreckage from a star killing cosmic explosion which we know of as supernova and using nasa's ixpe space observatory astronomers have mapped polarized x-rays from cassiopeia a the remains of a massive star that went supernova. And there's an excellent video here. We'll just take a look at a few seconds of it. Sonic is the supernova remnant called Cassiopeia A. Located about 11,000 light years from Earth, Cass A, as it's nicknamed, is the glowing debris field left behind after a massive star exploded. So what's cool here is that you can see the 3D imagery that they were able to capture using that limited spectra. And the resolution is atrocious. When the star ran out of fuel, it collapsed onto itself and rebounded explosively as a supernova, possibly briefly becoming one of the brightest objects in the sky. The shockwaves generated by this blast was in light years from Earth. Now, the fairy tale narrative they're saying, look at what's still in the center here, the star. After a massive star exploded. <laughs> so why is the star the still star there? Out of fuel. So again, we can point out some more ridic the ridiculous nature of cosmology when there's still a star in the center of the cloud in their depiction. But we have a high resolution of maybe the movement of the activity during the star's nova event which doesn't necessarily have to destroy the parent star. Now, some more frauds in science. Dozens of papers co-authored by a Nobel laureate raise concerns. Concerns about image integrity have so far led to 17 retractions, corrections, or expressions of concern for papers co-authored by geneticist Greg Semenza. So there's tons of frauds and people faking Studies so that they can get the funding that they need. And that's all it comes down to as we destroy the planet and destroy the minds of the youth. Idaho cobalt mine is a harbinger of what's to come. Yeah, it's literally the destruction of the planet Earth for the green energy movement. And cobalt is needed in massive quantities to make batteries. And we have some cobalt in America, and that means we're going to destroy the planet to get what we want. Ain't that right, Mr. Biden? And so what comes with these cobalt mines is dangerous escapes of toxic heavy metals into delicate fisheries, which have been happening time immemorial. And we already know that there's almost a 100% chance that 
a new cobalt mine will contaminate the local biome. You want to know about more and maybe the war and the clean energy transition connection? Well, it's lithium. And guess where there's tons of it? Yep. According to preliminary estimates, researchers believe that the Ukraine is a treasure trove of lithium, holding about 500,000 tons of the non-renewable mineral that makes renewable energy possible. Do you have any new thoughts on maybe why we're getting involved in World War III? Yep, it's the Green New Deal. Now, controversial new research suggests that <laughs> bears signs of genetic engineering. Hmm. I wonder who said that three years ago. And before we end, a terrifying close-up of an ant's face give ho gives horror monsters a run for their money. This has not been enhanced. This is simply a photograph of a tiny little ant's face. And it is terrifying. <laughs> now, in case you missed it, Lee and I did a great radio program Saturday, 12 noon Mountain Time on Revolution Radio, where we discussed in episode three, the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis, the proxy data, the black maths. And by the end of the show, we are coming to some amazing conclusions. So check it out in case you haven't. And that's a boom to knowledge. Thanks for all of you for watching. Thanks to our one-time donors, our Patreons, the heroes that share this video. We love you. And that's a boom.